patient than an oppression because I, I know that uh, uh, I'm carrying the answer. Amen. Amen. I'm carrying the answer. Uh, if you'll look with me in, in, in Romans chapter 3, please. This is uh, probably everything I say today will be, uh, uh, nothing's going to be new. There's nothing new under the sun. And uh, it might be things that you already know. And uh, that's why uh, uh, Peter uh, told us that he's going to stir up our remembrance. And uh, uh, there's a verse uh, uh, earlier in the book of Romans that uh, actually uh, uh, says, Let God be true and every man a liar. We're not going to look at that verse, but uh, that would be a good verse to explain myself. Amen. Let God be true and every man a liar, and I'm a man. So, that, so really, everything that I have to say, it better be based on what God has said. And uh, that's why it's so important to, to believe God's account of the home. All right? And God's account of the church. And God's account of this world. Amen. The Bible does say that uh, we are created in His image. After His likeness. The Bible says that everything was created for Him and by Him. Amen. So really, we're created for God. And if you're not in a right relationship with God, you're, you're just, you're not right. So really, everything that we know about God, He has been gracious enough to give us a book. Amen. That never changes. And that's why we're such a stickler about this old King James Bible. Amen. 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 Uh, Romans chapter 3, look at verse uh, 23 with me, please. This might be a good memory verse. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And uh, we, we, we see that. We see that uh, on, a, on a weekly basis. Let me, let me just have a word of prayer. Father, uh, there's plenty of things to say to uh, our friends and our family and our church. And God, I pray that uh, you'd be honored in what's said and done and uh, help us, Lord, to leave out some things that uh, might not be appropriate. But Lord, uh, help us to edify the body of Christ. Uh, maybe bring conviction to someone that's never been saved. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to look at things a little bit differently, uh, maybe than it's already been looked at. Uh, I uh, I passed out. Uh, uh, this is uh, what's short of a hundred uh, surveys. Really, you can't call them a survey in prison. I said, man, you can't call this a survey. So what what can we call it? We got to get around these uh, rules. They said, call it a questionnaire. I said, oh, y'all have learned how to <laughs> bypass the system. Amen. But uh, anyway, this is, this is basically some things that I ask uh, uh, the men that uh, really are part of our services. All right, so we're not uh, reaching to the men that are not coming to services right now, at least in this lesson. And that might be more helpful for us. All right, uh, uh, the first thing that I ask, I'll just read these things down through here. Uh, if there was a failure in your childhood, what was it? Uh, did these failures result in bad choices and how? <laughs> right, you you got to realize where I got these, all right? Uh, what could have been done differently? Uh, would that have made a difference in the outcome of your life? And uh, you'd be amazed uh, how many men uh, said no. And the last uh, question is, that when, when you get out, what changes will you make in your home? And uh, there's, there's a lot of, uh, I've got uh, quite a few uh, here. I'm, my wife asked me, are you going to read all those? I said, no, no, because really there, there are some in here that, that really aren't appropriate for mixed company. So I'll, I'll just, I'm not going to, I'll be, <laughs> I'll have some discretion, amen. amen. But uh, uh, I'll, I'm just going to read a couple of these, all right? Uh, uh, I'm not going to read the questions again, but uh, basically, uh, 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 this this gentleman here, and I told them not to sign their name. Uh, I, there's, <laughs> there's there's some things that I really I don't want to know about you. <laughs> I, you know I know enough about you because what God said about us. <laughs> Amen. 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 Just that verse we read there in Romans three twenty three for all of a sudden come show the glory of God. Uh, that tells more about uh, uh, you than you want to tell me about you. <laughs> But it tells more about me than I want to tell you about me. Amen. And Paul said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who should deliver me from the body of this death? And that's me. Listen, that's why we need to be born again. Amen. 
and uh, you might not believe this, I, but you've got to get to the place uh, in your life that you can believe you don't have to be you anymore. You've got to get to that place. You say, what do you mean? Who am I supposed to be? The new man. Amen. Not the old man. That's, uh, that's uh, anyway. Let me read this here. Uh, so the reason this guy had failure in his childhood is not taking the, the teachings of the Lord seriously. Now, that's, that's pretty good, isn't it? Now, he's, he's in prison. He says this, it is not by following God's word, and uh, uh, I was led by the world's view, but never satisfied. Amen. Now listen, we're talking about, uh, I know we're created in God's image. God created us, but we're fallen. We're not as God created. Amen. We are wicked. You say, well, not me. Yes, you are. <laughs> In yourself, you are wicked. Amen. Amen. I tell that to my little granddaughter. You're so wicked, Lydia. No, no. I, I, you know, they can't see it. But I can see it. I, just, I, mean, she, I mean, she hogs the phone on FaceTime. Amen. When, when Sarah's got a solo on the p piano, she wants to sing in. And, and Sarah's... I mean, just... We're selfish, we're self-centered, we're proud, amen. We're self-seeking, amen. But anyway, uh, see, that's why my wife doesn't want me to read all these. But uh, let me just say this, I, I am so thankful for being saved. And uh, God was gracious enough not to let me get married before I got saved. Amen. And uh, I, I don't, I don't recommend marriage to anybody that doesn't know God. Amen. Some, some folks get thrown into a marriage, and I understand that, and that's a sad situation. And, and uh, you can be born again, and uh, you can learn to love, and, and you, really you can learn to live. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, uh, this. This really is, is my heart. Because these men are coming to realize uh, that gentleman that was here last week, Brother John. He was with me for 20 years in prison. He says, you remember when you met me? I said, no. He said, 1994. He got out in 2014. But his wife stayed with him. His kids still respected him. His kids graduated from college. He's got one child that's not married yet. But his wife stayed with him. I tell you what, that is unusual. That is unusual. More times than not in these, uh, uh, the results of their quote-unquote wickedness, they're claiming is a broken home. But uh, uh, the wickedness of men is their sin. And the nature of sin. And some of us, we're in church, so some of us has just chosen Christianity as a lifestyle. Now you have to think about that for a few minutes, all right? It's a lifestyle that, that can be safe. It's a lifestyle that can look respectable. But if that's all it is, you're going to hell. Amen. Really, uh, uh, would would sinners be welcome here? I've already concluded all under sin. And since God's love is unconditional, is ours? Amen. <laughs> it's a Sunday school lesson. Isn't it good? i got to read this. Donald, you were right. I, I, there's no way I could read all these. I, I, I love my wife. I'll never forget a message Brother Joan preached uh, probably 25 years ago. On husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And I realized I didn't even know how to love my wife. And we'd been married had a couple kids. <laughs> but I really didn't know how to love her. The only possible way to love anybody is Christ. 
loving through you. The only possible way to live for God is God living for you. Amen. So, uh, would that have made a difference in the outcome of my life? Well, here, oh, let me back up. He said, what could have made a difference? My parents did not read God's Word at home, and I, and I fell into the same pattern. So, so really, the life you live is the life that you're teaching. Amen. Both parents, and, and listen, I, I know these are the opinions of a man. Right. Uh, both parents in later years turned to the Bible and God's Word. Hallelujah. And uh, really, that's that's why it's so. Really, the the uh, the evangelistic uh, field for the day in the church is young married couples that are just getting started, maybe just having a kid or two, and realizing, you know what, this thing is overwhelming. We're going to have to have some more structure. Amen. And Brother Tony knocks on their door and says, Hey, says y'all go to church anyway? You know, we've been talking about going to church. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So would that have made a difference in, in the outcome of your life if they had in, encouraged me and my sister earlier in God's Word? Uh, we would have uh, had the, uh, uh, our minds renewed. And I would not be in prison. And uh, he says, what uh, changes would you make in your home? He said, uh, uh, staying in God's word, speaking God's gospel, the words as he gave us all, focus on the Lord, live by faith and truth, witness for our Lord to my wife, my son, and my daughter who still are unsaved, And my daughter-in-law, and here's the real kicker, my grandchildren. This guy's a pawpaw. And he's just now figuring out what he needs to be doing. Listen, there's, there's uh, uh, people in here that uh, one of them, his mom was uh, killed when he was four years old. And his, died, his dad uh, died two years later. So his older brother was basically responsible for bringing him up, and when his older his bro, his older brother uh, taught taught him the street life, and when his older brother got old enough to join the navy, he went to the navy and left him on the streets by himself. So you know, some of these uh, uh, situations really were uh, not these individuals' quote unquote fault. You know, their choices. I understand their choices that they made. Amen? Amen. Since we're created in God's image, then what God says is more important than what we think. Amen. And, and I'm, not, I'm not here, to, I'm not going to tell you, you know, the way we did it. Because the only right way is the way God did it. Matter of fact, He's the only perfect Father, and He's had the only perfect Son. <laughs> Amen. So it's not even the way... Well, I, the way I do it. If you did it the way I did it, uh, then your children would turn. Well, no, if you do it the way God says, that's why it's so important to have a relationship with God. Amen. Amen. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, let's look at a couple of verses of Scripture, all right? Deuteronomy chapter 6, and, and these, these verses, uh, again, there's nothing new that we're going to talk about here this morning. It's already 25 after 10. I take my watch off uh, for really for no reason at all. But, but it makes my wife feel better. Amen. No, I, I'm, there, there's that, uh, that lion again. Let God be true and every man a liar. Right, Deuteronomy chapter 6, look, look at verse 4. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Listen, do your children know that? Uh, these these were these were some mommy's babies, these were some daddy's babies, and uh, a lot of them, uh, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them come from broken homes. Uh, out of these fifty, I might have in my hand thirty of them said uh, I had no authority figure in my life, no father. 
said that one of them even said, I, I went to church my whole life, but none of the men of the church ever took me under their wing. You know what I thought about when I read that? I thought about you, brother. That'll humble you, won't it? Somebody is going to make a difference. And that's why we're in prison. Why are you where you're at? Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Brother Carl Wright, uh, an old gentleman at the church there on Shady Acres, uh, taught to young couples for years down there and, and uh, emphasized the greatest failure in our homes is the failure to teach our children to love God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Verse 6, And these words which I command thee, these are not suggestions this day, shall be in thine heart. Thine heart. You know, we, we taught our, our children to memorize Scripture. Memorize Scripture. It would have been better if we taught them to learn it by heart. Yeah, that'll sink in later. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them uh, for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between their ni thine eyes. And, and uh, you'd be amazed how much Scripture is write written on men in the form of, you know, the artistic tattoos. You'd be amazed how much Scripture is written on men. I don't know about women because I don't preach in a women's prison. Thou shalt, but anyway, that uh, uh, verse 9 says, And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and upon thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give thee uh, great and goodly cities which thou uh, buildest not, and the houses full of good things uh, which thou fillest not, and uh, di wells dig which thou digs, diggest not, uh, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, and uh, when thou shalt have eaten and, been, and be full, uh, then beware lest thou forget the Lord. That's one of the uh, curses of uh, bountifulness. Plenty, uh, riches. It's one of the curses. Amen. That's why you people that are, uh, they do well, maybe for themselves, they get to the point where, well, I, I don't need God. Why do I need God? God's just for the poor and the weak. No. All the sin. Amen. Amen. So beware lest thou forget the Lord which uh, brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And uh, uh, I'll just stop reading there. I'm, I'm such a poor reader, but uh, this Bible is such a good reading. Amen. Listen, God commands us to train up our children in the way they should go. When they're old, they'll not depart from it. That's the book of Proverbs. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 says, Father... Uh, uh, I'm glad I got a Bible when my brain dies. Amen. Amen. And yours, yours might not die as much as mine does, but uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, And fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. The Lord is to be the primary focus of our hearts and our lives. Amen. And uh, uh, I'm not going to uh, teach and preach what uh, uh, Brother John uh, made mention of, but uh, th those that sound doctrine in Titus chapter 2 is a thing of the past. It's a thing of the past. And as a matter of fact, it's, it's so, we, don't, we just think it's hypocrisy, but God says it's blasphemy. When we don't do what he says, 
We're blaspheming the word of God. We're blaspheming the name of God. That's how serious it is. You say, well, you do the same thing. I've already told you I'm a liar. I already told you I'm wicked. When I rest in myself, that's when sin is produced. Amen. 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 When I rest in Christ and the Spirit of God, I can't sin because he can't sin. Now, do you believe that? You believing that is going to be the difference in your life and the way you live. Because if you think, oh, that's just, uh, that, that's just, what is it? That's the Word of God. That's the provision of Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, one of the things that uh, we try to, you know, teach these men is to have a personal relationship with God. Some people think, some people think, now, this is some people, that if these men were to go back into their, that same environment they came out of, uh, then they're just going to go right back to what they used to do. Listen, is your neighborhood full of righteousness and godliness and the will of God? Is anybody's neighborhood like that? I'm telling you, it doesn't matter where they go, if they're not right with God and want God, they're headed right back where they were. Amen. That's why they need to identify with some people that will love them, that will instruct them, admonish them, edify them, build them up. Amen. Not tear them down. Amen. You know what I expect sinners to do? That's exactly right, preacher. <laughs> Sin. Amen. I expect sinners you know, not to, well, we're not as we were made. All right, we're fallen creatures. Amen, amen, amen. Um, and really, what that does is that necessitates the need of correction. One of the things that uh, uh, these, one of these guys said, said, uh, what, what were the failures in childhood? He said, I was a spoiled brat. <laughs> You know, that's, that's what Cain was. He was just like his daddy. He was a tiller of the ground. And he said, I've got me a man from the Lord. He probably had the bib overalls just like Adam. Hey Amen. Chip off the old block. He said, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing. But you must be born again. Amen. Listen, the first man out of the garden was a murderer. Well, it's my environment. It's not your environment. It's your nature. Okay. It's the Sunday school. It's your nature. That's why we must be born again. We must be. It's not because you sin. It's because you are a sinner. That's the danger of our children being brought up in church. That's the danger. Because they, they think this is a Christian lifestyle. It's not a lifestyle. You've got some folks pushing a, an agenda down our throats of a, an alternate lifestyle that we think is an abomination. And the only reason you think it's an abomination really is because God said it is. And, and that ought to settle it for us. Amen. Amen. But we're not as much of a Bible believer as we... Uh -huh. Amen, amen, amen. The Bible says, withhold not correction. Our children need to be corrected. Amen. As a matter of fact, their nature demands it. Uh, one of the, you know, we have a, a self-consciousness just because God created us. Amen. But what happens when the, our, self, our consciousness of self is, is twisted, it's twisted into pride, it's twisted into selfishness, it's twisted, twisted into prejudice. Amen. I mean, we are so stinking prejudiced. I, I remind these guys in prison all the time, I am a racist. I am for the human race. Amen. I am. You say, well, their skin is a different color. 
they, they had a, they had a, 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 a Puerto Rican the other day made fun of that Japanese pitcher for the uh, Dodgers, and they're going to suspend him for some games next year. They almost suspended him for games in the World Series. Oh, that's a little bit too serious. And he was just cutting up. Really, what he was doing is he's just being prejudiced because of his pride. He just hit a home run off this great pitcher. You say, what is that? That's the wickedness of man. Y'all got real quiet there. You don't, might not know what I'm talking about. That's all right. They just did this number in the bullpen. And the cameras are everywhere. <laughs> Y'all all right? Okay. <laughs> Listen, uh, 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 reason. Reason. You say, well, should we use our reason? Well, yeah. But the problem is our reason is fallen. And instead of receiving God's revelation, we use our reasonings to plot and to scheme to make others look bad. If we make them look bad enough, we'll make ourselves look what? Better. <laughs> Not just gooder, but better. <laughs> Amen. Our communication's corrupted. Amen. Evil com communication corrupt good manners. 1 Corinthians 15. And he said, Awake to righteousness and sin not. Amen. For some have not the knowledge of God. And he said, I speak this to your shame. Some don't know the truth of God because of me. Amen. Our communication is turned into cursing and to lies. My kids work up at Pumpkin Hollow. They work up their Pumpkin Hollow and they're amazed, these little kids that cuss them out because they scare them. So I wouldn't put my children in that environment. Listen, my kids need to know how wicked they are <laughs> and how wicked we are. I don't like that. I don't, I, I'm not here to tell you what to do. You, you better do what God tells you to do. Amen. 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 You better follow the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, train up a child and we should go when he's old and not depart from it. Now, that doesn't, really, it's not a promise as much as it is a warning. That's why you had better be responsible for teaching your children about the Lord and his love for them and the wickedness of their own heart. That's why they, they pick on each other. Amen. They're wicked. <laughs> That's a Sunday school lesson. Isn't that good? But really, this, you know, this is, is the results of, of sin. And I, and I know we can protect our children with character lessons. Amen. And I'm for it. Amen. But they need the Holy Ghost inside of them so their conscience gets more sensitive to themselves and to others. Listen, one of the things when, when Isaiah finally saw God as he is, high in the position he deserves, but lifted up. High means his position, but lifted up means he deserves it. Usually the guy that kicks the winning goal they don't go over there and, and pick the losing goaler up. So, oh, you missed. Praise the Lord, you missed. Because you missed, we won. No, they pick the guy up that kicked the goal. But really, the guy that missed it is what allowed him to score it. <laughs> but you lift up the one that you deserves it. That's why God is high and lifted up. And as soon as Isaiah saw that for the first, maybe the first time, he's already a prophet. But he said, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. And when God touched him, one touch from God changed his heart. And he no longer looked at himself, but he said, woe is me. I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. And God said, hey, who, who shall go for us? And he said, here am I. I'll go. How long? Until the cities be desolate. Okay. Until you can't find nobody to tell. Okay. Amen. That's why we go into the hedges, the highways, the byways. Amen. Because that's where you're going to find these guys. Amen. But we've got some of them right here. Amen. You're looking at one. I just didn't get caught by the right person. You know, we're laughing about it, but really, that's it. I mean, I just didn't get caught by the right person. Amen. I'm not going to 
incriminate myself. Amen. I believe in the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> our reason, our reason, our communication is corrupted. Our creativity is turned into destruction. That's why when your little sister or little brother builds a sandcastle, you kick it down. <laughs> That's why you break toys. You're destructive. That's in our nature. You say, I don't believe that. Well, whatever. <laughs> we break and destroy. Rules are turned into tyranny. We bully. We use our strength and our size to pro promote our advantage. Amen. Amen. These guys, some of these guys are in here for assault. And they could take care of themselves even now. But now they've learned that, you know what? It ain't worth it. Go ahead and beat me to a pulp. I'm just, I'm not going to put my jerseys on. Uh, uh, jerseys are what they, they're allowed to have in prison. And if they're going to fight, they, they put their jerseys on. Those brown gloves, you know what I'm talking about? They'll carry them in a back pocket because they never know when they're going to need them. They don't want to cut their hands on somebody else's face. Amen. It's not that they can't handle themselves. They realize, you know what? It ain't worth it. Amen. Morality is... Obviously turned into immorality. And again, if you, you can very easily be corrupted. You can be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And you can be corrupted. And nobody even knows it. And you think because you've hit it, you're victorious. No, it just shows the wickedness of your heart. Amen. Amen, amen. You don't have to be contaminated by this world. Amen. I, I, I'm not afraid of being contaminated by this world. I, I had all the world that I wanted. Amen. I had it all. And I'm not going to go any further than that. Amen. But now I see God's love. I see God's favor. I see God's power. I see God's purpose. So that's why, you know, it, it, it really doesn't even matter. You, you don't know what I've been through, and that's okay. Our imaginations are corrupted now. Vain imaginations. And it's simply because we would not believe what God has said. Uh, I, I, believe it or not, I did have notes. And the, the danger of me having notes is there's too much in this Bible. Uh, but uh, the nature, our nature demands correction. It demands it. That's why we correct our children. That's why we have to. He said, well, I love our children. I love my child too much. The Bible said, he that loveth them, correcteth them be times. Amen. If you don't correct your children, you do not love them. He said, well, who do you think you are? I'm just telling you what God says. You can find that in Proverbs chapter 8, 19, verse 18, and Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. And God has given us a responsibility to discipline Listen, the direction of our, our, uh, of our nature is wrong. Listen, you're born not going to heaven. You're born going to hell. That's why you have to be born again. Amen. Amen. So our direction needs to be changed. And the only way it can be changed is if they get saved. Amen. That's why the Bible says that the... Uh, the, uh, the ah, I'm glad I got a Bible. Uh, I, Psalms 127, I think uh, Brother John started with that verse, but... Uh, as a, uh, I'm glad I got a Bible. Amen. Uh, Lo, children are heritage of the Lord. That's uh, Psalms 127, verse 3. Uh, heritage of the Lord, the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of thy youth. That's direction. Uh, Anthony killed a deer the other day. Didn't you? Did he kill it? With an arrow. I, to me, that's impressive. Amen. I'm not trying to, don't get the big head up there. Amen. But that's, that's impressive. But I tell you what, he didn't just do this. He did this. I mean, I was trying, right when he released, he finally stilled up. I don't, I don't know. It's, he's probably pretty steady. But there's direction. Our children need direction. Amen. And it's our responsibility. It's our, and our, our love for them, really, it demands that we teach them. Amen. And uh, the Bible says in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 that uh, really, uh, that if you don't believe what God says, you're not 
going to be affected by God. There's a verse in Galatians chapter 5 that uh, you that are justified are, are justified by the law, you're fallen from grace, and Christ is of none effect to you. Could you imagine being saved and Jesus Christ not affecting your life? It's possible. As a matter of fact, it's because we follow traditions instead of book. Amen. We follow our ideas. Dr. Phil. <laughs> Used to be Dr. Spock. Not the guy that had the big ears on Star Trek, but the, amen, the psychologist. Or John Locke. Amen. Or uh, uh, Freud. Amen. Anyway. But we're following God. Just like these men. And we have a responsibility to God, to our spouse, and to our children. Amen. Father, we're thankful for the word.